Hello, you're watching James. My name's James. You're watching me, and I am talking about watches. Well, today I'm going to be doing the full review of the Felita GMT. And this is a watch that I have wanted to buy and put in my collection for some time. And that is because it is a homage of a Omega Seamaster GMT, and it is the exact watch that my brother owns. Now, he bought his watch about 10 years ago. It is now a discontinued Omega model, but this watch is the homage to that watch, and I certainly intend to do a side-by-side -side comparison between the two watches at some point in the near future. Now, if you like this video or any others that I make, I really appreciate if you hit on that subscribe button. It is the quickest and easiest way to support me and the channel, and it keeps me motivated to keep making videos about watches. Now, I bought this particular Felita watch off the Felita official store on AliExpress, for 136 Australian dollars and I think at that price point this watch is quite amazing it really is it is also much more affordable than my brother's Omega which 10 years ago he paid five and a half thousand Australian dollars for and of course if you are interested in this watch I'll leave one of those affiliate links down below but let's check out this watch now and let's get into it let me show you why I like it so much and why I think it's such good value at that 136 Australian dollars let's have a look so the Felida GMT model number SE12 just comes in this very, very simple packaging. Nothing too special about it, not even branded with the Felida logo. But inside, obviously, we've got the watch and we've got a little hang tag and that's all we get for our money. Well, that's perfectly fine because really what I want to arrive is the watch. And I'm going to say, if you just have a quick look at this watch, especially if you see it at a bit of an angle, it resembles that Omega Seamaster so much. It really does look a lot at a glance, like the watch that it is homaging. And it does that partially because of obviously the visual looks, but also the dimensions of it. And that being 41 millimeters of a case diameter, it is a 14 millimeters thick. The lug to lug, nice compact, nice wearable 46.3 millimeters. We have a 20 millimeter lug width. And on this supplied bracelet to my six and three quarter inch wrist, it weighs in 159 grams. And looking at it closely, I am really looking forward to getting my brother's watch and doing that side-by-side -side comparison, which will be coming up in the next month or so when he agrees to lend me his watch. But let's have a look at this one in detail, shall we? I think it's produced really well, and it's amazing at the price that these companies in China can actually produce these watches. You can see the dial there has that lovely wave pattern. Now that is a very 3D effect to the dial there. Printed on, we have the two, four, eight, 10, etc., around the edge in white also Felita and automatic. There is a minute track with the hours slightly more bigger than the rest of the minutes printed on there as well. The indices are applied and they are loom filled. The indices have these surrounds of polished metal. We have a double baton at the 12, a single at the six, as well as the nine, and the rest are these dots. We have a date at three o'clock, Unfortunately, it's not color matched, but we do have a nice printed white surround and a bit of a half indice sitting there as well. Now the hands are skeletonized, but they are also loom filled along the shafts of the hands as well as the tips, but there is a polished surround in steel around that loom area. The second hand has a lollipop end, which is also loom filled and a little needle tip, which is colored in a red. The GMT hand, which is the biggest piece of color that's on this dial, is red, but it's also loom filled. And let's check out that loom, shall we? As you can see, there's a couple of different types of loom being used here, or at least different amounts of layers of loom being used. What's on that bezel has a really nice crisp blue look to it. It's quite strong and it actually lasts quite consistently over a long period of time. Whereas the loom that's on those indices as well as those hands, it is a slightly different color and it fades fairly quickly from the start and certainly diminishes as time goes past compared to that bezel insert. That dial is covered by this very slightly domed sapphire crystal and it's surrounded by a ceramic insert on that bezel. It is a nice blue and those blues go quite well together as well. Sometimes they don't always match well, but I think they're a nice complementing blue to each other. It has this nice little scalloping along the sides, which is obviously homaging the watch that we're expecting. And one of the absolute standout features of this watch is the bezel action. It is absolutely lovely. This action on this bezel is as good as bezel action on even much more expensive watches. Obviously it's a 120 click unidirectional bezel and it's just a lovely one to use. I really like using this one. Such a lovely clicking noise as well as nice and such a nice action. Absolutely no back play, no lateral or up and down movement at all. 
and it all lines up really well too. Now inside here we have a Mingzhu DG5833 GMT movement. It has hacking and hand winding. It also has a screw down crown. As you can see, we have hand winding and we have hacking. So one of the questions we are going to ask is, is this a true GMT? Well, of course, at this price point, it is not a true GMT. It is a 24 hour hand. However, it is not slaved to the hour hand. It can be moved independently, so we can effectively use it as a secondary time zone. If we turn it one way, we're affecting the date window there. If we turn it the other way, you can move it independently just like that. Now, I do have to say that it is a little bit hard to find that position sometimes. I initially thought when looking and playing with this watch that it was slaved to the hour hand because I could not find that position. But once you do, you can move it around nice and easily, as you can see. And let's see how this Chinese GMT movement runs on the time grapher. And I think the set of numbers we've got here, they're not perfect, but they're not particularly bad either. We have a 21,600 vibrations per hour, minimal beat error, very nice healthy 293 degrees of amplitude, and it's running about minus two to minus 10 seconds a day. There's a little bit of snow effect on the time grapher, which does say that the movement's not perfect. It says there's probably not the greatest quality of movement inside there. However, it's actually not too bad. Now let's have a look at that case and that case shape because it is very, very nicely done, very well executed. We have some high polish along the top edge here and we have some lateral sort of brushing along the side. You can see it's a semi-guarded crown. It's unsigned, but it's very nice and easy to grab hold of. On the other side here, you can see that brushing a little bit better and we do have a helium escape valve here. Obviously, that's not going to be a real helium escape valve. However, you can unscrew it and obviously then screw it back up again. The case back is very simple. It has just a nice sort of brushing on the circular inside, as well as that sort of interesting screw down sort of section around the outside. We have solid end links and that fit really well to the case. They are female end links, so they drop down away from that case nice and easily, so it makes a nice fit to the wrist. Now the bracelet does look quite good and it certainly reflects the watch that is homaging. However, these are not individual links, they are one solid link. And just to show you exactly what I mean by that, you can see that that is one solid link, but it was divided up a little bit just to look like it's separate links, but we have one link there. It has a nice sort of feel and thickness to it. We have screw pins. We have some nice satin brushing with some high polish insets along those edges there. It makes it look very nice and pretty. This is also brushed in like a satin finish, which is very nice. And then we come to this clasp. And I have to say that this clasp is one of the best clasps I've seen on any watch at any price point. It is really, really well executed. It has a nice soft satin brush into it with twin pushes. We can see that it is milled, which is very nice. But then when we look that way, we can see that the clasp head as well is also fully milled. And how many watches can you say that you have got from AliExpress that is fully milled? Most of the time this is milled, but you very, very rarely get it milled on the top of the clasp there. And when was the last time you saw a fully milled diver's extension? I have watches that are a lot more expensive than this, and they do not have a milled diver's extension. That is very, very impressive. However, because of that diver's extension and because of that mill clasp, there is no micro adjust, but we do end up with two half links. I've left one in and taken one out to get a good fit to my wrist. And here we have it on my six and three quarter inch wrist, and it feels wonderful. This is a very, very nice feeling watch on wrist. I'm not quite sure how they've achieved it for this sort of price, but the overall size, dimensions, weights, even with that sort of faux link bracelet, this really nice clasp, it just fits nice. And it just has that nice, comfortable weight to it that you just want to wear and you want to be able to see and feel it on your wrist. So what do I like about this watch? What don't I like about it and what would I change? Well, let's for, the, for something a little bit different, let's start at the back end of it. I love this clasp. Not only is it very well put together and milled, not only does it have that milled diver's extension, but it is actually just a really nice clasp in action. It has a nice clip to it. The two buttons work very, very well. and just feels nice on wrist. It also has a nice sort of width to it as well. Really fits in with that bracelet. 
the bezel action on this, as mentioned, one of the best that I've had from any AliExpress watch. And at this price, it's absolutely amazing. And talking about price, the absolute affordability of this one. Wow, you do get a lot of bang for your buck with this watch. However, what don't I like about it? Well, there's not actually that much that I don't like about it. Obviously, it would be nice if this, these were individual links rather than one solid link, but that's about it. I can't really think of much else. Um, obviously, the movement in there, it's not running perfectly, but at this sort of price point for a GMT style movement, you can't really expect too much more than that. So what would I change? Well, again, I'd love for that to be individual links, but that's really all that I can really think of at this stage that I'd want to change about this watch. So let's flip the camera back to me now and let's see what my final thoughts are about this Felita GMT watch. So I am super impressed by this watch. I think it has a lot going for it, especially at this super affordable price off AliExpress. I think that bezel action is one of the best bezel actions I've had off of any affordable watch. And I think that clasp with that milled divers extension, it's very impressive at this price. Now I am really looking forward to borrowing my brother's Amiga Seamaster GMT so I can put these watches side by side and see how close they actually look together when you have them side by side. Okay guys, I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it every time you do take time out of your day to watch one of my videos. I hope to see you in my next video.